everyone, and welcome to the Comic Shelf. First up, I'd like to apologise for the delay in the release of this show. It's been pretty much non-stop around here since Supernova, with a whole pile of changes happening around the shop. So, I'd like to show you, a little bit later than I would have preferred, some of the footage from our days at Supernova. After Supernova, we started moving everything around in store, so it's much more open and far easier to access. Then after that, we went to Nexus Fair and Vic Park. Then to cap everything off, I ended up with a really bad dose of the flu. It's taken so long to get this show done, so let's just get straight over into the news. San Diego Comic Con happened recently, but sadly, most of the news that came out of there was actually entertainment news, not comic news. Thankfully, there's enough of that still going around. As everyone surely already knows, DC is reinvigorating 52 of their titles that are being released as of this September. Well, not to be outshone, Marvel is also doing something similar. Starting next year, they will be releasing a series of new graphic novels entitled Season 1, which is set in the continuity of the original comic series. So they will be following a lot of the original teams like X-Men, Fantastic Four, and the older sort of ones, to try and get the original readers and new readers alike back on board. Speaking of number ones, DC has a whole pile more planned for October and onwards, including things like Huntress, Shade, and even a new Supernatural miniseries. IDW also has a whole pile of new number ones planned for release, including Monocyte, Dead Rising, and even a new 30 Days of Night series, ongoing series, created by original writer Steve Niles. Of course, Marvel's always in the news as well, so they've got a whole pile of number ones, including Incredible Hulk starting from number one again, a new Deadpool Max series, and Wolverine and the X-Men number one, advertised in the latest previews. And one last little movie-related tidbit, if you've not seen the Captain America movie yet, please remember this is an Avengers tie-in movie. Stay until after the credits. It's an excellent scene. Uh, the basic plot of this movie is an Autobot ship escaped from Cybertron carrying a weapon that could have won the Autobots the war. It crash lands on the moon. The Americans and the Russians pick up the crash and start scrambling to basically launch a mission to the moon to find out what this crash is all about. The cinematography was as good as usual. For me, the plot seemed to be running smoothly. The action scenes were brilliant. Uh, Patrick Dempsey did a really good uh, job playing the human ally to the uh, Decepticons. Probably moved, um, from my perspective, it moved probably a little too fast. Overall, um, if you didn't mind watching the first two, I would say go watch the third one. As a few people sort of bagged it, but um, overall I gave it a 7 out of 10. And coming up next, we've got the game reviews with Charles. Hey everybody, and welcome to another review for the comic shelf for a video game I really, really enjoyed. Batman Arkham Asylum on PlayStation 3. This game is absolutely amazing. Graphics. Playability it plays exactly like you think Batman would play. His, his combat is amazing. It, um, it's really, really interesting. The, the story starts off where he's escorting the Joker back to the asylum, and it turns out it's just a trap. And you get trapped in there with him and all the other inmates, and you have to go through it and stop Joker taking over the place. It's, all the, um, a lot of the major bad guys in it, like Killer Croc and the Riddler and um, Harlequin. And um, it's even voiced by Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. Don't be a stranger. He surrendered almost without a fight. As you go through it, you get different gadgets. Um, I'd recommend this game totally. It's third person action adventure. And anyone who enjoys Batman or just a great fun game, then I recommend it. And at the end of fear, 
Oblivion. First up is X-Men Schism number two. This is a really, really good read. I mean, I'm biased because I'm an X-Men fan, but there's an interesting twist going on here. A lot of the Schism stuff has been leading to the X-Men splitting up and all of that sort of stuff. This is playing out so well. It's got a lot of the stuff with the Sentinels, which is what they kept on sort of hinting at was the reason for them splitting. And there's the reintroduction of the Hellfire Club, which is played out really, really well in this. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly where it's going. It's not a great jumping on point for anybody that hasn't been reading X-Men. So you need a little background, but this is an excellent story. And once it's over, everybody should get into reading X-Men. Fear Itself, The Worthy. This is a one-shot that ties into all of the Fear Itself stuff. It's really, really good for people that don't really know the background of the characters that have gotten the hammers because that's basically all it is. There's eight stories throughout this, which basically covers each of the characters' origins leading up to them getting the hammers. But pretty much, if you already know these characters, you don't need to pick this book up. Really, really well done, and it's interesting the way they've gone for a different art style for each story and everything. It's probably worth checking out. Next up is Wolverine, Deadpool, The Decoy. Just from the cover, you can tell this thing's bloody stupid. And I love it. <laughs> it is such a stupid idea for a story and the characters are so out of place, you know, Wolverine would never suggest things that he suggests in this and it's just, it's a Deadpool comic, that's exactly what it is. And there's two stories in it, the first story is all about Wolverine and Deadpool teaming up to destroy a giant robot thing, and the second story is Deadpool's team up with, I think it was like the West Coast something or other. Uh, it's a, one of the B-team type groups, um, which again was quite funny. Uh, it's definitely not a bad read, it's just the stupidest premise I've ever heard. Next up is Fathom, Volume 4, Number 1. I tried reading Volume 3 and I just could not get into it. It was very confusing, I couldn't figure out what was going on and it was all set underwater and all that sort of stuff, which fair enough, she's from underwater and all that. But this one is set more in a human, civilised world, so there's a lot more to be able to relate to. The artwork is beautiful, the story is so much more coherent than the previous volumes, and it's just, this is worth checking out. It is a really, really good read, and if you want something with really nice artwork, and it's just a really cool story, you should definitely check out Fathom, number one. Terminator Robocop Kill Human, number one. I think pretty much the title says everything you need to know about this. The artwork is passable, it's definitely an interesting darker sort of artwork and all that sort of stuff, it does work for the title, but I, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm not that into these characters, but it seemed just to be created to make money. It's not bad, and I'll keep reading the other ones but it's nothing that's got me hanging for the next issue. Gotham City Sirens number 25. This is the most pointless comic I've ever read. Issue 24 finished everything beautifully. Uh, basically Harley and Ivy were put into Arkham Asylum and Selina left. You know, it was so perfectly finished. And then they come out with issue 25 and there's an issue 26. Well written story, it fits into the Sirens story arcs and all that sort of stuff. It's got really nice artwork and everything. It's just so pointless because this finished on such a great note in the last issue. It's a shame. Flashpoint Project Superman number two. I am actually quite enjoying these. Flashpoint obviously is leading on to the whole reboot with DC and all that sort of stuff. But this is already a reboot with who Superman is. Basically, it starts off a lot like a uh, Captain America comic or something like that. This guy gets superpowers uh, because they give him a serum and all that sort of stuff, which is derived from Superman landing on Earth and all that sort of stuff, but the government got to him first. It really is an excellent read. There's only one more issue, and I'm assuming he escapes in the third issue. Not sure at this stage. Um, but this is a really, really good read. If you like the Superman character, this is well worth checking out. Duke Nukem, Glorious Bastard, number one. Why the hell did they make a Duke Nukem comic? 
I know there's a lot of popularity with Duke Nukem at the moment, you know, the game's finally come out and all that sort of stuff, and it's gotten bad reviews. So should this. This is terrible. If you haven't been a huge fan, you are not going to like this comic. It is terrible. Silver Fox Comics over in Sydney have just started releasing Zorro comics, and I've had a chance to have a sneak peek before we get them installed. This looks like it is going to be a great comic. Hot off the heels of the ongoing zombie craze, Zorro is up to his neck in some great action. Zorro Del Rio, I hope I'm saying your name right, has written a great story here that even non-fans of Zorro should be able to enjoy. And the artwork by Emerson Demir has a beautiful black and white art style to complement it. All wrapped up in an amazing cover by Ali Fell from Danger Mouse Count Duckula and Xenoscope fame, this is a comic everyone should check out. Okay, that's it for the comic review, so we're going straight over to the manga review. This week's manga is a brand new one. It's called The Betrayal Knows My Name. It centres on a young uh, teenage boy named Yuki Sakurai. He was abandoned as a baby. He's now in high school and he's plagued by mysterious dreams. He's now discovered that by touching people he can actually access their memories and their feelings. He meets a young guy named Zess who warns him not to go outside on Walpurgis night, which is a night of demons, sort of like our Halloween. Because he's in the orphanage, he's gotten to know all of the people there, and he's a very friendly, outgoing young boy, and he discovers that two of the children from the orphanage have gone outside and they've disappeared on Walpurgis night, so he goes out to see if he can find them. Uh, what follows from there is demons and being rescued by strange people who decide that he should go and live with them because he apparently is part of their group who has been reincarnated and they all tend to stick together each time they're reincarnated. It's a really, really good read. I couldn't put the book down, so I would highly recommend it to anybody. Pick this one up. Evangelion 2.22, you cannot advance is where it is at for all these apparent promises of new exciting progresses in plot and new characters, AVA units, and confusing developments entering the fray. It's been a long time coming for all those fans who shuffled along through the direct retelling in the last movie, but here we are with some rather interesting takes on well-known story elements, as well as a few unwelcome surprises. Firstly, let's look at the story. The story takes a rather different path as a new character, Mari, is introduced as an AVA pilot, and we meet Asuka Langley's Sir... I, I mean, Shikinami. Gendo gets the key to the Nebuchadnezzar, and we see the Avas take on the Eighth Angel, showing surprisingly good amounts of teamwork, and then Asuka gets really depressed for no freaking reason. Outside of that, it's all new story, and there is a mention of new Avas on the way, Mari drops in, and there's a surprising switch of characters at a critical scene, and a final battle that truly lends credence to just how insane this whole series really is. It really is an interesting direction they've taken the series, sticking to the original plot points while adding new elements to keep it fresh. The characters on the other hand, well I'm a little divided on them. Shinji just as he always was with Rei and Asuka playing out more like the characters in the Raising Shinji Ikari party than anything else. Character motivation is a little strained at times, and dynamics between them are confusing. Again, I credit that more to the fact that they have to compress several episodes down into a few minutes in this case. Asuka's time on screen is cut unusually short given her large part in the original series, and Mari is given hardly any attention at all. She just kind of appears and fights. I'm hoping these issues are addressed in the following movies, but it would have been nice to know something about the characters before they got wailed on. Kaji's in it for about 5 minutes and we finally get an idea of what Kara is up to, but really, you will need prior knowledge to have an engagement with these characters to truly feel anything for what they're going through. You see, if you have never seen Evangelion, you will have no clue about any of that stuff I just said. But that's the point. The animation, on the other hand, is unbiased. It's absolutely astonishing. The level of detail, the CG effects that blend seamlessly into the drawn backgrounds, the little touches are what would make these movies the price of admission. From the first battle to the last, everything is so painstakingly crafted to create the most visually stunning experience. There is really not much else to say about it. Just look at it! It is what makes the film. Pretty much everything is top-notch, from the beautifully re-recorded orchestral score to the top-notch voice cast in both English and Japanese. 
There really isn't much left to say about it. Even Gillian has always been one of those series I will always be attached to since it's one of the very first serious animes I got into, and this movie totally does it justice. It may not be a good introduction to this series to newcomers, as Anno planned, but it's astonishing on so many levels in terms of animation. If you have the time, nothing beats the original series, but these movies will stand the test from the fans, especially if this new ending has anything to say about it, given the shaky past of the series' endings. I recommend you check it out. It's fun, fast, and engaging. Just don't expect any answers. Okay, it's competition time. Last time, it was New Avengers number 9. That means we're out of the $10 and we're up to $20. What's this one? All you have to do is send through the comic name and issue number to the website, and you could be the winner. That's pretty much all we have time for today. I know it's been a really, really long show, but that's because it took so long to actually release. Uh, basically, nothing is going to be happening until October. In October, the middle of October, we've got Nexus Fair again, and at the end of October, we're going to have, instead of our usual celebrations, our Halloween anniversary or anything like that, we're going to have a one week sale to celebrate our two year anniversary uh, because Halloween's like the middle of the week or something this year. Um, so, pretty much nothing's going to be happening until October, so I'm going to take a short break from doing the show. Uh, I'm going to come back and it's going to be totally refurbished. We're going to do a whole pile of different things with the show. Uh, hopefully, I'll have more people actually part of the show. And a few interesting changes, hopefully. Uh, so, I will be releasing little snippet reviews like uh, when the Ninja Turtles comic comes out. I'll do a little review of that and things like that. So there'll be quick little one minute reviews still placed on our website and on Blip or YouTube, whichever media you watch this on. Um, so don't you know think that I'm not coming back or anything like that. It is still going to be done. It's just going to be far, far smaller because I've got a lot of stuff I want to do for the intro of the show. I've got to start doing my own music and all that sort of stuff. So this is it until around about the middle of October. So stay tuned for the little snippet reviews and we'll see you all in October.